Hey, what's up, everybody? I, uh, a theater course went live today, so I wanted to hop on and chat for a little bit a minute about, uh, well, the theater course for one, but also design. Uh, and my tripod here broke. Kids got it and broke it, used it as a toy. So, uh, sorry, camera's a little shaky there at the minute. I think we got it worked out. But anyway, uh, we just launched our theater beta group. Um, and in case you haven't done a course this before and kind of unfamiliar how that works, what we do is we launch course. When we first launch it, we do it as a beta. So we give it 50% off to everybody that wants to get in. Um, well, seats are limited because we don't want to have too many on there. We want to be able to interact with you and get some feedback. Um, but for people that sign up, it's 50% off. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to post all the videos for this course live in a group where you can access um, both the live recordings and the posted recordings, get a lot of feedback from you about what we're missing, what maybe wasn't totally clear. And then we'll re-record all those a second time with a little bit more polish and um, post those to the general public and sell them at full price. You'll have access to both. Um, but because you're helping us in the beta group, then we give you 50% off. So um, we just launched that. It just opened it. So there's... Um, uh, we've already posted some links, but I'll post more in the comments here. You can go to um, link in our bio, the Instagram page, and I'll post one here in the comments as well. And that'll take you to the site uh, and you can get access to the course that's interesting to you. But for just a minute, I wanted to talk about uh, theater design. So this is something kind of we're going to talk a lot about inside of the course. But one of the interesting things, kind of our background, if you followed us at all, you know, we've done some pretty cool theaters. And I give the credit to the clients because the clients are the ones um that actually kind of are responsible for these theaters that we've done. It's usually their imagination, their idea. We're just the beneficiaries of it. We were able to come in and help them with this cool idea that they had. And we've been fortunate with some really cool clients. Um, but one of the things that happened to us early on, a lot of people don't know. Um, all right, sounds good, Steve. Uh, we couldn't get anybody to buy a theater from us early on. Um, it was kind of a fascinating thing. We'd been doing smart homes for a couple of years, but nobody wanted to buy a theater from us. And part of it, frankly, was because we weren't actually sold on theaters ourselves. Um, we kind of were telling people like, well, you should do a TV and a sound bar. And I remember going to this guy's house in Houston and he's a big builder. He built a lot of homes for you know NFL, NBA athletes in the Texas market. And we were at his home. We had this huge home. It was you know, well over 10,000 square feet. I want to say it was 15,000 square feet. We lived on an acre on the water and we're walking through this big, beautiful home and we get upstairs and he shows us this incredible theater. And I remember him telling us that of all the things that there is to do in this home, um, he says, we're, this is our favorite place. This is where we want to spend time as a family. And I kind of called BS as politely as I could. And I was like, you got this big, beautiful home and an acre lot, why would you spend all of your time here? And he's like, well, no, no, you don't get it. It's not that we're actually watching movies all the time here. We do, but it's just it's just a space where we want to hang out. Our kids have the bean bags. They can play on the game consoles. They can watch movies. We can sit on the bar in the back with our laptops and do work. Like this is where we want to be together as a family. And I still didn't totally buy into that, um, but it was a big step into us going, okay, theaters, media rooms are really, really cool. And fast forward, we finally sell our first theater. We actually did one theater before this, but we had to give it away. We um, couldn't convince anybody to buy a theater from us. So we actually gave them the theater. Uh, so this is the first theater that somebody bought from us. And I'll never forget the, uh, the Dolby demos had just hit. And so we had these Dolby discs. And we come down the stairs and we fire up his theater for him. He loads in a Dolby disc and he's playing the Enrique Iglesias song um, by Londo. And his wife and his kids come running down the stairs. They're all dancing and having just this incredible time. And it was like, oh my gosh, it's just like the guy in Houston told us, like, this is where people want to hang out. It's where they want to spend time. And everybody's got kind of their own reasons for what they want to do inside of their theater. But this is where people want to spend time. And so we started pushing and selling theaters, but things were still slow. We started reaching out to all of our buddies in the space, like, what do we need to do to sell theaters? Everybody's like, skill up. And so my brother and I decided to divide and conquer. We went to THX certification and ISF certification and HAA certification. Uh, we even flew out to Brooklyn, New York and spent a day with a guy named Theo Calamarakis, who is the godfather of home cinema design. It cost us about $10,000 to fly our team up there and rent gear and whatnot to spend this day with him so we could learn everything we could about home theater design. Incredible, incredible individual. He's done some amazing stuff with theaters all over the world for some really cool clients. And we learned a ton from him. So we've done all this and we're trying to help these clients with their theaters. And 
we're hung up on this idea of the perfect theater. And THX says this, and ISF says this, and HAA says this. I'll give you an example. One of the things that people talk about is that you don't want your seats, the back of the seats up against the back wall in the theater, because acoustically, if you're right up against the wall, it's just not going to sound as good. So we go to Brooklyn and we walk into this gentleman's home that's, you know, like I said, the godfather of theater design. And we walk into his home and his seats are up against the back of the wall. And I'm like, wait a second. But it's because the space didn't allow for the perfect room, okay? So it was kind of an aha moment for me. We're like, all right, even this guy here who knows everything there is to know about theater designs understands that he has to make some, excep some exceptions to the rule. So we have this, this builder come to us and he says, hey guys, I have a client and it's kind of a package deal. I've told him that if he wants us to build his home, he has to use you guys for his tech, but he has a theater. I know you haven't done a lot of theaters, but I need you to knock this one out of the park. He's building his entire home around this theater. So this is the most important piece in his home. So we're like, all right. So we go to this guy's house, we walk down the stairs and we get into there and it's this baseball diamond shaped theater. It's already framed. The whole back end of it's opened up uh, on three sides and everything about it's a disaster in terms of the perfect space. The screen walls like itty bitty. So he's not gonna have a big screen, but even then there's no good way to have the separation in his front speakers for the sound staging that we want. Back ends open, acoustics are gonna be a wreck. Um, sight lines are a wreck that goes all the way out to the edges of the room and vertically the sight lines are wrong. Like, it's a disaster. It's a ton of ambient light that we can't overcome. It was before laser projectors, like just a mess. And we started consulting with everybody in the industry we could find, our good buddy Felix. Fast forward uh, a couple of months, this theater is part of a parade of home and some 20,000 people come through this home. We think it's gonna be a disaster. These 20,000 people come through the home and it's a grand slam. All of a sudden, people start calling us from all over the place, asking us to design their theaters. And it was a really interesting moment. It's when we kind of realized that we're too hung up on this idea of the perfect theater and the perfect space or the perfect media room. And what's interesting is that that was the first theater we won an award for. And we've since won a number of awards. If you follow us, we had three theaters, three years in a row, win best in class at CES uh, in Vegas. And what's interesting about those three theaters is every single one of them was an unideal space that was not dedicated, it had ambient light issues, had at least one if not multiple walls opened up to other areas in the house. And so we were winning these awards for, for non-ideal spaces. And if you go through our Instagram feed and you look at all of our theaters, I can't think of a single theater that we've done that was truly a dedicated space, let alone like that ideal space. Almost every one of our theaters is um, not perfect, okay? And an overwhelming majority of our theaters or media rooms are somebody's great room where there's a projector coming out of the ceiling or a screen coming out of the ceiling or, um, you know, walls opened up on three sides of it. So. These standards with THX and ISF and HAA, they're important, but they're tools. They're not the end, they're a means to an end. And what changed for us was kind of wrapping our head around the fact that clients everywhere have space in their home that they can use as a media room, where they can have that experience that these clients told us about, where it's the room you and your family or your buddies want to spend the most time in when you're together. And it doesn't matter if that's the ideal perfect space or not. There's enough technology out there that we can take that space and we can make it the best possible experience for you. And if it is the best possible experience for you, you're going to love the theater regardless of whether or not it's that perfect ideal space. And that's when everything for us in terms of the theater business took off. We stopped worrying about perfect spaces. Uh, in fact, I don't get very excited about perfect theaters. I get way more excited about theaters that are in an open space or an open room acoustically they're not ideal they're not perfect for video but we can make them in a phenomenal experience and creatively it's a really fun process to work with those clients and go through okay here's your rooms um <laughs> what's up eddie eddie you've got a pretty cool space same thing we're talking about up there in the loft i remember going through it with you um thanks my friend uh so that's that's kind of what we're trying to do okay so what we've done is we've put together a theater course and the, uh, when I post this, I'll put the link in the comments, but you can also find it in the bio of our Instagram page. And it's a theater, it's a theater course, it's in beta. So we're giving it away for 50% off for the first group that comes through on beta. 
and we'll film everything live and then we'll leave it there for you to see um, the recorded versions of it. We'll get feedback from you. And it's kind of our part of saying thanks for that feedback. Um, we will give you the 50% off. That's gonna help us build it and repost it for everybody else. Thanks, Brandon, I appreciate that. Um, so that's kind of that's kind of it. That's our story in terms of of how we do theater design. And if you're watching us now, um, yeah, you bet, man. More of those to come. Uh, appreciate the support as well and watching. We got uh, more info videos coming, um, less live streams. But for right now, we're doing a bunch of live streams. But the whole reason our theater business took off, and uh, we've got our VR theater design service where we actually do virtual renderings and help you kind of grayscale the room first. Make sure platform sizes are thought through and screen sizes are thought through and you know throw distance and projector screen marriage all that kind of stuff is thought through and then once we dial in the grayscale then we go to laying in kind of the design colors carpets seating whatnot you know treatments of windows it's kind of phase two and then we give you a package um a quote a design estimate for the gear uh, everything that's going to happen inside of that room and the reason we got into all that is because we stopped focusing on these perfect spaces all the time clients come to me and they're like, oh, I've got this dream home, but I don't have a space where I can put a theater. And what we find out is that they have not only one, but many spaces that could be a cool media room and usually a fantastic media room. Um, I just shared this on our Instagram uh, post, but I'll share it again here. For those of you that follow us, we just finished a huge project in Boca Raton. And it was interesting because the client had a half million dollar technology budget. That's what he spent on his home. Not all that went to us, but that's how much he put into technology. So relatively speaking, his media room had a pretty small budget. Um, it was sub 20,000 for his media room, but he had a projector and a screen um, that rolled out of the ceiling. Uh, thanks Eddie, I appreciate that my friend, as always. So we had this projector and screen that rolled out of the ceiling. I'll answer the question on platforms here in just a second. Projector and screen roll out of the ceiling and we're finishing up his home the last night and um, he and his daughters know that the theater is open. So he goes into his media room, projector and screen come down, shades come down, dark out all the windows, and he and his three daughters chill out on this big couch and enjoy a movie together. We, we walk out of the garage and we come back the next morning. The first thing he tells us, he's like, my daughters and I had the very best time watching the movie together. And it was, if you see a photo of this room on our Instagram page, there are windows on three sides of this room. There is an actual wet bar um, and a wine rack on one end of it. You've got uh, east exposure and sun coming from the ocean on one full side of it. And then you've got uh, the hallway with big massive opening of light coming down that side. It is not a media room or a theater room by any stretch of the imagination, but when he presses the button and the shades come down and the projector and screen come out of the ceiling and it transforms into a media room, it's a really, really cool space. And it was one of his favorite things of the half million dollars in technology he put into his home. That was the part he came to us the next day and said, my daughters and I had a fantastic time together, enjoying the media room, watching a movie together. That's the whole reason that we do theaters is for you to have that room in your house where you and your family can get together or you and your buddies can get together for the big game, watch and enjoy a movie together. So with that in mind, um, again, when I post this, I'll put it in the comments, uh, a link to our beta group special. It's 50% off um, today and tomorrow, and then we'll close the cart. So jump on there now. Uh, if you got any questions about it, feel free to hit us up in the comments. Uh, happy to answer anything that I can for you, but we would love um, to have you all in there for the support. Uh, but also to help us make it the best possible course that it can be. Thanks, Jay. I appreciate it. Um, say hello uh, back to India for me. A uh, question came up about platforms. Platforms aren't perfect, but here's the thing that you need to understand about platforms. There's two big things we're looking at. If you have two rows of platforms, you need to have seven and a half and eight feet of space between the two platforms, even if the bottom platform is actually the floor. The reason for that is that when seats are reclined and feet are out and heads are back, they'll touch if it's any less than seven and a half feet. Even then, you're gonna to have to put the seats back up to walk out or walk in, which is distracting and obnoxious. So if you can go to nine feet, which almost nobody has space for, then people can walk through the rows when you're fully reclined. Um, but seven and a half feet seems to be kind of that sweet spot where you can recline your seats all the way, feet won't touch the heads of the people in front of you, you can have a relaxing experience. The second thing we're worried about with platform size is vertical sight lines. 
okay? So if we're 12 inches above the platform beneath us, most of the time vertical sight lines are fine. What I mean by that is the heads and the platforms underneath us aren't gonna chop off the sight line. Sometimes, depending on where the screen has to be positioned on the wall, that still becomes a problem. Like we'll see people that have duct work in the room and so there's some kind of like a false ceiling or a decorated part of the wall that's dropping that duct down uh, a foot or even two feet and that makes the screen go down. So even if you have a 12 inch ceiling, you can still or a 12 inch platform riser, you can still have sight line issues, okay? So sometimes we'll go as high as 18 inches. Um, if you look at like a cinema, they're usually 18 to 24 inches between platforms. There's reason for that. It ensures the sight lines are protected. So that's it on platforms. So if you got any other questions while I'm on here for just a second, feel free to, feel free to hit me up. I'm happy to answer any questions I can for just a minute and then uh, I'm gonna hop off. If you're just coming on, um, we're just letting everybody know that we launched our theater course. It's open today and tomorrow and then we'll close it. It's in beta, so we're giving it off 50% off as well as some bonuses. We're giving away all of our digital courses that we've ever created. Uh, how to design a smart home, how to wire your home, control for mini course, all of those as part of uh, the beta group. So link will be in the comments and then if you go to our Instagram page, there's a link in the bio for that as well. So. Anybody else got any questions? I appreciate everybody watching. Appreciate the support. The uh, YouTube audience has been amazing. Um, it's one of the things we really want to double down on this year is doubling down on our um, info videos and how to's here on YouTube because you all have been awesome and uh, we really appreciate it. So it's coming. I don't look like anybody has any questions. So uh, two by eight or two by 10. Um, I assume you actually mean like the actual wood construction um, and I don't know because we don't build them so it's whatever the builders are using so I'm not sure honestly on that answer um, what kind of construction they're using ah, I appreciate it car um, that's great great feedback we're glad it worked for you and glad it helped um, funny enough that's one of the that's one of the most requested things we get is how to pre-wire a home so if you can do nine feet between your seats, um, it's not going to improve. Ah, you're the builder. It's not going to improve how you view the movie. It's just going to make it easy to recline your seats and let people still walk through it. Uh, I got to get the, uh, here we go. All right. Uh, now I can see. I own an automation company in India. Will this be useful for me as per India standard? Jay, I'm not totally sure. I think it'll be useful. Um, I think in terms of video, video and audio are, are pretty um, universal wherever you're at. We're not going to dive too deep into like how to wire it. Um, so there'll be like power requirements and wiring requirements absolutely be different in every market. But in terms of, um, you know, sight lines and just good, um, good, uh, good practices for theater design, I think you're going to, I think it'll be helpful. So. Nazir, I'm not totally sure how to answer that here um, quickly. I would say just hit us up. I think you already have. So we'll reach back to you. Shoot us an email or DM, DM us and we'll, we'll reach out to you. Sorry guys, my, my tripod broke. So I'm, I've actually got this sitting on a, uh, on a true audio subwoofer box. So it's a little wobbly, but all right, we're gonna sign out. Um, check out that link. And like, like I said, once I post this, I will post it in the comments as well. So appreciate everybody and all the support. Thanks, guys.